and another aspect of the film, or a minor aspect, which I thought was quite interesting, was that there was a couple of characters in the film that were dealing very much with the mental repercussions of having served in Iraq. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you think that's something we'll be seeing in films a lot from now on? Because, I mean, throughout all major wars in history, there's mm. always been films made about them yeah, and yeah. The, the mental anguish mm -hmm. that people go through. And no, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, I mean, hopefully, hopefully there won't be. Hopefully, everyone's get, you know, they'll you know, this new administration is going to sort of pack things up, but I mean, I think Afghanistan is going to go on for a long time um, to come. Um, you know, I mean, I think just this morning, you know, there's sort of fresh reports of, um, you know, uh, people killed in the line, and, it, you know, it's, um, I think, horribly, the mental trauma and the stuff that takes place when uh, those soldiers return home, because that part of it, I think, is again controlled by a media, you know, I, th there's a hell of a lot of it going on, and there's a lot of it that you're not hearing about because, you know, politically, and um, you know, propaganda-wise, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to sort of publicise that mm. kind of thing. So, yeah. I mean, in one way, it would be nice that we didn't have to have that problem and have more films made about it. But I think if people are going to get to know about exactly how horrible it is, I mean, you know, it it, it is a small part of Franklin. It's um, it's something that I think uh, happens to this character that has a knock-on effect of other things that have happened in his life. It's, yeah. it's not solely about that. Um, mm. I think it's like, you know, it's, it's part of what puts him on the edge. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I, I would imagine, I think in the hands of maybe another film, maybe something else needs to be said about the reality of what's actually really, sure, really going yeah. on. Yeah. Okay, and um, w another thing that I thought, um, the one major theme that I thought united at least the four principal characters was that they were all searching or they were searching mm. for something or they yeah. lost something. Um, to what degree was that in your mind when you were making the film in the first place? Was that one of the central themes you were trying to... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, when people, when people are, uh, are slightly lost in life, um, I just like the idea that um, there was this sort of existential janitor that sort of, you know, stepped in and those sort of forces would come in and just sort of gently sort of prod you about and sort of put you in the right sort of direction. I mean, you know, you sort of call them guardian angels or whatever, but I mean, um, uh, taking the feeling, so, you know, when you're lost in life, you know, when you're sort of feeling that, you know, career's not going so well and, you know, just wondering about relationships and sort of, and, 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 and you're looking for something. Um, I think it was this idea that, you know, maybe what's happened is that you should be doing something else and you've just slipped out of reality a bit yeah. and that something's happened somewhere and you really shouldn't be on this path and that's why you're sort of feeling a bit confused and like, why is this happening to me? And that somewhere there's another you sort of happily mm. going merrily sort of, <laughs> sort of on your way. So, the ether somewhere. so they are lost, but I think they sort of, I think they're sort of spiritually lost. I think they're just sort of like, all of them, I kind of feel that, you know, the world's doing this and they're somewhere over here, sort of trying Away to get from out, the because it, 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 feels quite, it feels quite constricting, it feels quite a sort of uh, claustrophobic place, yeah. they're all living in even London, um, and I like to think that at the end, the mechanism whereby um, uh, Milo and uh, Amelia meet sets everything right, you sure, know, yeah. sort of puts everything in a sort of back to the future way. <laughs> 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 no, not like that, so, but you know what I mean. So uh, I just had a vision of Dot Brown and his blackboard. Yeah, yeah. It's 88 miles an hour. Quick. <laughs> um, okay, just moving on a little bit now. Uh, it's your first feature film. Yep. This one is, and your your past experience is primarily in music videos. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, when I got back from film school, I I worked in production for a while. I was a, I was an assistant director. I mean, I I, yeah. I did one of those things. I just sort of left school and joined the film industry because mm. I wanted to become a do what I'm doing now. Uh, <laughs> Junkets. But the thing is, uh, at that point, I became an assistant director because I thought then you become a director after that, yeah. which isn't actually the case. Um, okay. You know, I mean, it's a sort of... It's not know, like an apprenticeship or something, no. Not really. I mean, I mean, you can, but yeah. I mean, it's not... I mean, you know, if I'd known back then, I would have, you know, probably jumped straight to the camera department. But, mm. um, and but, what, you know. did, you, did you learn anything specifically, uh, for example, in the, in the music video business that you can apply to feature films, or specifically um, to this as well, to Franklin? Sort of horribly, it's all about tr getting it done, and um, uh, I don't know, just sort of pulling off sort of minor miracles. In it. I mean, you know, well, the, the, the music videos that I did, I think, you know, one of the first music videos I did, I did a thing for, um, there's a band called Space New, from Liverpool, and they, Tommy, the lead singer, did a duet with Keris from Catatonia. Sure, okay. And, that, and I ended up doing a load of videos for Catatonia, but um, 
we did the Ballad of Tom Jones, and they were hanging off this um, cliff in a car. Oh, you know, yeah, it was sort of very uh, sort of Hitch Hitchcockian type moment. Um, but we had no money to do it. But um, a friend of mine who worked at the Moving Picture Company, um, there was this bloke called Mitch Mitchell who used to do the special effects for Blake Seven. And he used to live in a little, well, he didn't live, obviously, but he used to have this little cupboard in the Moving Picture Company, uh, which was his office. And they sort of kept him there as a sort of special effects sort of advisor. Um, and he said, oh, you want to give my mate Lee Took a ring? He does matte paintings down at Pinewood. And I discovered matte paintings. I discovered that oh, for see, yeah. not a lot of money, you've just got something, you know, that's as big as this, yeah. you know, like half it's the size of this mirror. Effect, that isn't it? Once it's on camera and the, the skill of a good matte artist, I mean, this yeah. was before digital mats, he was actually painting it. Mm. And I remember on the morning of the shoot, um, this sort of piece of crap turned up that just looked awful. And I was like, what the hell is that? And he said, just put a lens on it. And the moment... An you know, an incredible matte painter. It d just doesn't look like anything. Yeah. And then you stick it in front of the camera, and it it's just, just comes just alive. Light, I mean, it's just, it was just so weird. And I and I fell in love with matte paintings then. Absolutely. And I started trying to sneak them in where I could. And my producers got really bored after a while because they <laughs> just like, you know, can we just put in some, you know? But um, but yeah. So I mean, going through, you know, when you're making those little films like that, and you know, music. I like music videos because they are little films. They're yeah, you have to tell a story in three and a half minutes. Exactly. Basically. You yeah. know, and and the sort of stuff I was doing all very. I was doing like indie stuff, which lent itself more to doing stories of than course, sort of. Yeah. You know, I mean, as much as I'd like to have been sort of shaking booty around a swimming pool. Girls you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some. You know, I, when you, when you look at the great music videos that are out there, you know, it's 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 John Glazer, Radiohead, it's mm. Michelle and all the Bjorks. You know, it's 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 interesting, sort of slightly odd, yeah, odder, yeah. better music. You know, yeah, that, that does okay. the good stuff. But yes, it was helpful. Great. And mm. uh, finally, if you can tell us a little bit about the casting for this movie, because I'm sure, well, like, it's a fantastic cast. You got mm. Ryan Felipe in there yeah. and uh, Eva Green as mm -hmm. well. Is it difficult to attract? that calibre of talent to a debut feature? Well, um, again, I mean, what was great was, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, you've seen the film, and I think you probably agree, she, I mean, she she just is Amelia. I mean, there's the, 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 I, I've never really seen somebody take to a role like that, and just, I mean, she just nailed it immediately. We had a lot of discussions, and she put a lot of it, um, a lot of uh, work into it herself. I mean, mm. Eva was sending books to me and things to read and um, things to watch and yeah. you know that, stuff I that I had. She was one of the original casts. Wasn't she, she was, she yeah, was yeah. I mean, she, yeah, she, I mean, she, it was, she, she was always there. Yeah. Um, and um, and she and I and I think her her love of the project. Um, I mean, she yeah. I mean, she was almost she was kind of the glue that held it together because you can imagine putting something together in an independent way when you're trying to keep these plates spinning, you know, with the, with four lead cast. It was really, really hard. But I mean, she also, um, you know, met Jeremy on The Dreamers, you know, very early on. And so she had a lot of trust for him and, and worked with him before. Um, but then Sam came in to read for Priest, weirdly. Oh, I see. Um, and which, of course, he's completely wrong because he's just such a great, nice guy. You know, there's, a, you know, there's, um, there's no... Uh, Sort no of, deceit uh, in his eyes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not saying that about Ryan. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Ryan's Ryan's been around a bit. You yeah. know, he's you know he knows Perhaps, how to, he knows yeah. how to handle himself, and he's um you know he's, uh, he's he's a man of the world. Whereas Sam's still got that great innocence and that sort mm. of great sensitivity. You know, which brought so much to control. Um, and he was just so obviously Milo when he walked in. I mean, he you know. Mm. They weirdly, there's a, they, they're almost sort of like brother and sister sort of strange sort of thing going on. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely like sort of, you know, bookends, you know. Mm. Um, and, um, and yeah, because we had, I mean, there was an original, um, at one point, uh, Ewan McGregor was attached, but um, that was sort of only very briefly, and he had sort of all sort of, well, he broke his leg and broke all sorts of things. Was all it all on the long way down or something, was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, as far as I rides. know, he... Did it around the corner from his house in St John's Wood. <laughs> I, I, oh, that's I, correct. I, 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 that, I think that so. I, I, that yeah. made the television series. Actually. Yeah, that's I right. That. Yeah. So, um, uh, so that had a knock-on effect. But then, um, you know, the, I think, you know, I mean, I don't know because this is only my first film. But I think I'd like to think that what happens is this sort of, you know, um, sort of slightly sort of fatalistic thing happens, and the right people turn up at the right time. Of and, course, uh, yeah. and you know, and I think. They're an incredibly interesting bunch to look at on screen. I mean, Bernard Hill, I thought was absolutely, he's, he's, he's great. And he just runs that rather tricky line of being sort of sort of part of the villain mm. of the piece in one thing, but you just feel so sorry for him. He's just a rather pathetic character yeah. with a lot of anger underneath this really sort of conservative exterior. And I thought, I, th I thought he did it, I, I thought he did it brilliantly. He did, yeah, yeah. I agree there. Yeah. And uh, so when, when is it opening? 
in, in Dublin? Uh, 20, uh, I'm not sure, actually. Oh, it's don't you? 27th of Feb. 27th of in Feb. The, in London. In London. I assume it's the same year as well. I would imagine so, I yeah. Imagine so. yeah, well, yeah. Everyone, everyone's this. nodding, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 27th of Feb. Right, well, I'll do that part. I'll put it in bold and italics. Yeah. Okay, Gerald Moore, thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Take care.